What is going on YouTube? Akers here again once again with another fun After Effects tutorial and in today's lesson we're going to be learning how to create this cool paper style 2D intro within After Effects. So if we take a look at the preview you can see we've got this really nice paper effect and we've got some animation of these circles being animated in and we've got some text, we've got tutorials, graphics, intro. So this is kind of a promo slash intro kind of effect so that's what we're going to be learning today and I'm sorry I've been away for so long I've actually had the cold and the flu so that's the reason why I haven't been making very many tutorials because my voice hasn't been working but I'm back ready to teach you some more cool stuff so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to open up a new composition the usual 720p we'll make it five seconds long okay and the first thing that we're going to do is add the paper effect so you can see we've got this nice paper canvas overlay effect going on and to do that I'm going to be using this texture and it will be the link will be in the description of this video so you can go down and download it yourself and follow along or you can use your own textures any textures will work with this so all we're going to do is drag our texture into the timeline and we just want to resize it and now what we're going to do we're going to come over to the timeline select the canvas layer and we're going to hit F4 and that's going to bring up the blending modes for the canvas and currently it's set to normal but what we want we want to set it to multiply now you're not going to notice anything different straight away but for example if I put a put an ellipse on top of the texture if we just pop an ellipse there you can see it's just a normal flat red color and that's not we that's not what we want we want it to be the same texture as the as the canvas so to do that all we have to do is drop it underneath the canvas layer and now you can see anything underneath the canvas layer is going to have the same texture as it. So that's really cool. And now what we want to do, we want to start to animate this thing. So if we drop down the attributes of the shape layer and drop down transform, you're going to see anchor point, position, scale, rotation and opacity. The first thing that we want is anchor point. So if I zoom in, you can see we've got this little crosshair and that crosshair represents the center of the ellipse or sphere so what you want to do you just want to move the anchor point to position the sphere so that the crosshair is in the dead center of the sphere and that will become more apparent later when we start to animate so I'm just going to scale it up a little bit we want it to be a little bit bigger Okay, so I've scaled that up to 150% and now all we're going to do, we're going to start to animate and keyframe this. So to do so, we're going to be keyframing the scale. So you just want to move to maybe 15 or 20 frames on your timeline. We're going to hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe and then we're going to move to the start of the timeline. So it's zero frames and we're going to set the scale to zero. So what this gives us is a growing ellipse, like so. But instead of it just coming and stopping, we want to add a little bounce to it. So you just want to move a few more frames in front and scale it up just a little bit. And that's automatically added a keyframe. So we can go ahead and move forward a few more frames and then scale this back down to our original scale which was 150 if I'm corrected so if we play now what we should get is a nice bounce effect like so you can see it bounces there and we can also select these keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard that's going to create easy ease keyframes and it's just going to make things nice and smooth Okay, so the next step that we want to do is 
to create a few more bouncing spheres around the edges so to do that we could either command D duplicate the the red sphere that we've already made but because we've already got some keyframes with the scale it's going to be tr pretty tricky to try and rescale it all so we're just going to pop some new ones in so I'm going to come over to the ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw a smaller sphere and like we did originally we want to come down to the transform tool and you can see we've got the crosshair in the center of the screen we just want to position we want to move the anchor point so that it's in the center of the sphere like so okay so now we've centered up our anchor point we can move this over and start to animate this like this like we did with our original ellipse so all we want to do is select scale once again hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe move to the start of the timeline and then set this to zero and then once again we're going to move just past of where we made that keyframe and then we're going to scale it up just a little bit and then move forward a few more frames and scale it back down to 100 so now what we've got we've got two nice bouncing ellipses like so and we can select all these keyframes and hit F9 and that's going to create once again some easy ease keyframes so now that we've got this sphere sorted we can command D or control D if you're on a Windows computer to duplicate it and we're just going to move one over here command D again move, maybe move one here command D maybe move one in the corner here like so so that's all good and now what we could do with is moving our texture to the top of the timeline like so that so now that all the ellipses have that texture to them so now what we've got we've got a load of spheres bouncing in but what we want we want a bit of randomness so to do that all we're going to do is stagger the shape layers and all that means is we're just going to move some further along and we're just going to move these just so they all don't come in at the same point so if you see now we've got some nice randomness going on it's looking pretty cool so the next step now that we've got the ellipses all done and keyframed is we need to add the lines that spread out and that's really easy all we need to do is go over to our shape tool select rounded rectangle tool and all we're going to do is we're going to draw a nice rounded rectangle like so and I'm just going to rename this shape layer this shape layer to line and now what we're going to do we're going to animate the actual line itself so to do that all we're going to do is we're going to be changing the scale again so if I just shut the rest of these off for a sec what we're going to do we're going to animate this line as if it's growing so all we have to do is go over to scale maybe move to one second on the timeline hit a keyframe for scale move to the start of the timeline and then all we're going to do is we're going to drag this and just make it smaller like so so you can see now we've got a nice growing line you can make it as fast or as long as you'd like So now that we've got our animated line, I'm going to turn all these back on. And what we want, we want to position the line. So if you hit W on the keyboard, that's going to bring up the rotation tool. And you can start to rotate this. 
and hit V on the keyboard to get back to your selection tool to move it around. So you just want to position it like so. And also you don't want the line to be straight away, you want it to come in after the spheres. So we're just going to move the line maybe to one second. So you can see now that the spheres come in and then the line goes to the other spheres like so. And that's all good, that's what we're after. And I'm just going to move the line underneath the texture like so, just so everything's looking nice. And then all we have to do is Command D, hit W on your keyboard to rotate it, hit V, and just it's just repositioning these to wherever you put your spheres. Command D again, hit W to get the rotation tool, hit V on the keyboard to get back to your selection tool. And it's just about positioning these where they look best and to match up with your other ellipses. So just one more left now. Command D to duplicate it. Just going to rotate it and position it nicely, like so. And what we can also do is also stagger these lines as well so that they don't come in at all the same point. So we've got some nice randomness going on. So you can see we've got these spheres that start to bounce in and then the lines come across. So we're getting there. So this is pretty much the basic animation. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start to create the text and then animate the text. So to create the final step of the text, all we're going to do is, it's really simple to do actually, but all we're going to do is create a new composition. We're not actually going to be using this composition, but we're just going to be using it to create the text. So I'm just going to create a new text layer. And we'll name this acres for now. Maybe scale it up a little bit. And if you remember the anchor point that we was working with earlier, if we drop down the attributes of the text layer and come to transform, you can see we've got this little crosshair here again. Currently it's set to the left, but we don't want it to be on the left. We need the anchor point to be in the center top, like so. Because now what we're going to do, we're going to animate it as if it's swinging in. So to do that, we're going to select our text layer and hit F4 on the keyboard. And we're going to select this 3D box, which is going to turn it into a 3D layer. And now this gives us some extra attributes. We get Y, X and Z rotation. But we're only going to be worrying about the X rotation for now. So if I just move to one second on the timeline. And I'm going to move the X rotation to maybe 90 degrees, somewhere around there. I'm going to move to the start of the timeline, hit A, hit the keyframe, hit the stopwatch to add a keyframe and then we're going to move to one second on the timeline and then set the X rotation to zero. And now what that gives us is a nice swinging motion of the text. We could do with increasing the speed a little bit, like so. And that's all we're after. And now what we can do, we can control C, control V into our current composition. And all we have to do is just reposition this. And because it's white, it's a white text layer, if we drop it underneath our texture, you can see that we get that really nice effect where it's kind of cut out. So you're going to need to position the text layer so it comes in at the right time like so. It's looking good and then all you have to do is duplicate the text layers, reposition them and then rename them, maybe this one tutorials. 
Now there's one more final step and then we're all done after you've carried on with the text. So the final step is to add some motion blur to give it that really nice effect. Um, so to do that all you have to do is come over to your timeline, hit F4 on the keyboard and you see this button here, enable motion blur for all buttons, for all layers. If we select that and then there's the same button next to the 3D layer on all your layers. All you have to do is select that for all your layers. And then what that's going to do, that's going to give us some really nice motion blur. So you can see we, at the bottom we've got some really nice motion blur. And it's just really subtle but I, I think it adds a really nice effect. So that's pretty much done for today's tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and you found something new and interesting to learn. And I will see you again very soon in another video tutorial. Thanks for watching guys. See you later.